Hey everybody, Pastor Jason and Pastor Andy back with you on this Worship Wednesday. Wednesday. And what a great day. What a great day to worship the Lord. And let me tell you, let me tell you a great way to close this day out in worship. And that is at seven o'clock. Yes, come on. Be at the Revival Center campus if you live in the South Metro Atlanta area, or be at the, if you live in the North Macon Forsyth area, uh, be at the Forsyth campus tonight, seven o'clock. Let me tell you something. Mm -hmm. This is this is a a shot in yes, the middle of the absolutely. week for for us to to bless the Lord first mm -hmm. and then to hear from the Lord. And there's literally something for everybody. everybody. So so I'm talking about from the littlest to the not so littlest. We have something for everybody and we would love to see you tonight. 751 Dean Patrick Road, Locust Grove or 962 Juliet Road for Scythe. We would love Yes, love, yes. Come love down. Come to down. see you. So we'll see you tonight. Amen. So you you enticed me. <laughs> I, I the, enticed you to come back. <laughs> at the close of yesterday <laughs> with a story. Uh, and so I need you to tell hallelujah. me. Hallelujah. Tell me what you were about so, to tell me. Well, what we was going over is your enemy knowing upon your faithfulness to God your next move. Mm. Wow. I am I am telling you. You already wiped me out. I'm <laughs> so me and Pastor Jeremy, we was uh we was we was going through a, a, a season and and it was so amazing because um the season we was going through was was just a season of um of really people kind of Falling away from Christ, but not falling away and just walking off. Mm. When they fell away, they would they would they would lash back out. Do a church doing damage on their they way would out. they would yeah. purposely lash back out at yeah. the church. Yeah. And um and anyhow, you know, we was just walking through this season and it was so amazing because they knew our next move. Mm. Everything they did and everything they said was on purpose because they knew we were Christian. Mm -hmm. And because we was Christian, they already knew our answer. Yeah, yeah. They knew that we was not going to deter from that. That's right. They only forgot one thing. Mm. The Lord our God is with us. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> they only forgot yeah. one thing. This the same the same thing that the satraps and the governors forgot. <laughs> That's all they forgot. <laughs> I'm telling you, bro. And and it people looked around and they said, "What are you gonna do?" I mm. said, and and at at this point in time, I was talking to some very close friends of mine, and they said, "Well, what are you gonna do?" I said, "What are you talking about? What am I gonna do? I have no option. Mm. I'm gonna honor God in everything I do." Yeah. I'm not changing. Mm. It doesn't change who I am. It doesn't change any of that. Mm -hmm. None of that changes. My uh, dependency and mm -hmm. my commitment towards God does not change. Yes. Anyhow, so they would they would literally plan things out and be two and three steps ahead of us. Wow. And they knew when we when we made it there, we was going to do this. There was no doubt in their mind. This is what they're going to do, mm -hmm. and uh, and at the end of it, they looked at they looked at me and Pastor, and they said, "Don't you realize that if you continue to go this way, you'll lose everything?" Wow, wow! And I remember looking at them and saying, "That's impossible. <laughs> it ain't even possible to right. lose everything." Yeah, because. We could stand as Abraham did and said, "You don't understand where it came from. Mm -hmm. It came. You don't. You don't understand. Yeah, I didn't make it happen. Yes, it was God that did it. Yeah, it'll be Him that upholds it. And if it has to be done again, it'll be Him that does it again. Mm -hmm. It's not inside of us. We position ourselves, mm -hmm. and if it costs us everything, that's fine. Yeah." Yeah. There, that's no problem at all. Right, right. There, there, no qualms. I ain't even upset. Yeah. I'm not even angry. Right. And they was like, I, I remember some of the responses. 
<laughs> some of the responses. Mm -hmm. I mean, people wanted to go out and fight people for, for us. Yes. And we're sitting around saying, no, 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 don't even be mad. Right, right. And they're like, what do you mean don't be mad? And we say, absolutely not. Yeah. God bless them. Yeah. The Lord will reward them for their good deeds just like he does us. Wow. Wow. And at the end of the day, mm -hmm. God justified us. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, mm -hmm. we was rewarded. Yeah. Well, let's let's pick up on a person, and I know that this was not where we intended intended to go, mm -hmm. but we, you and I, rarely go where we intend to go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's Worship Wednesday, yeah, people. <laughs> I'm telling you right now, we're liable to go anywhere. Anywhere. They. Uh, Let's go back to, to the book of Genesis. And it was a person who, who even though it's not stated in the Bible, mm -hmm. so to speak, that this guy has an excellent spirit. We do know that, that Joseph had a spirit in him yes. that distinguished himself. As a matter of fact, when, when, when Pharaoh was speaking of Joseph, let me mm -hmm. see if I can find that as a matter of fact. I want to say, say that first in, in verse 37 of chapter 41. Uh, so the advice was good in the eyes of Pharaoh. This was the advice that Joseph gave to him on the other side of his dream and said, here's what you need to do. And so the advice was good in the eyes of Pharaoh and in the eyes of all his servants. And Pharaoh said to his servants, can we find such a one in, as this, this man in whom is the spirit of God? Then Pharaoh said to Joseph, inasmuch as God has shown you all this, and there is no one as discerning and wise as you, you shall be over my house and over all my people shall be, or, or all my people shall be ruled according to your word. Only in regard to the throne will I be greater than you. Wow. Okay. So now, of course, we know the, the story of Joseph and, and how his brothers came to him and, uh, you know, and, and they, they came to buy food. Joseph tested them a That's couple right. of times and then eventually said to him, hey, listen, Bring my dad. We we have more. We have several more years of this famine that's left. Bring my dad. Bring your families. There's a spot here. He sets them up in Goshen. His dad dies, mm -hmm. and now they have to take. Uh, they have to take his dad's body and go bury it somewhere else. And so uh, the, the, brothers. the brothers get in here. Verse fifteen <laughs> of verse fifty, mm. or chapter fifty. Pardon me. When Joseph brothers saw that their father was dead, they said, "Perhaps Joseph mm. will hate us." Yes. By the way, there are times that people are going to view you through their spirit. Oh, come on. Come on. Through the lens come of their spirit. There are people that are going to view you Absolutely. through that. Absolutely. Perhaps Joseph will hate us and may actually repay us mm. for all the evil which we did to him. Yes. So they sent messengers to Joseph saying, before your father died, he commanded saying, thus shall you say to Joseph, I beg you, please forgive the trespass of your brothers and their sin, for they did evil to you. Now, please forgive the trespass of the servants of God, of the God of your father. And Joseph wept when they spoke to him. Look at that spirit. Wept when they spoke to him. And then his brothers also went and fell down before his face and said, Behold, we are your servants. Joseph said to them, Do not be afraid, for am I in the place of God? But as for you, you meant evil against me, but God meant it for good in order to bring it about as it is this day to save many people alive. Mm. Wow. This is what you're talking about here. Yes. That they're, that that even the people who did evil against them are saying, listen, now this cat's in a position that he can retaliate and we have no defense. Wow. We did wrong and this is the most powerful person <laughs> in Egypt, except Absolutely. for Pharaoh. Absolutely. And the fact is, is that Pharaoh doesn't even tend to his own business. This guy does it. And so they say to him, first of all, they send emissaries. They send people to him saying, hey, listen, man, remember what your daddy said? Mm -hmm. Then they come. Joseph weeps when he hears that. Yeah. Why did he weep? He wept because he's like, wait a minute. Do they think I have that in me? Yeah. What kind of person do you think? What kind of person do you think I am? Because the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, faithfulness, gentleness, mm. patience, goodness, 
self-control against such there is no law is. i know i got those out of order but i yeah, think i got yeah, them all yeah, in there yeah. but this what joseph is saying is do y'all see that kind of fruit in me anywhere do you see retaliation do you see murder do you see any of those things inside of me no 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 here's what i want you to see i want you to see that i get that what you did was wrong but the wrong you intended saved so many lives and i am grateful that god used me yeah yeah wow yeah here's yeah. the thing mm. god didn't use joseph because he was good looking though he was good looking yeah and it says it. the bible says it yeah. he didn't use him because he was strong he was strong the bible says he was mm -hmm. didn't use him because he was intelligent he was intelligent the bible says he was didn't use him because he was talented he was talented the bible says he was he used him because there was an excellent spirit. There was such a spirit. Inside of him, a distinguishing spirit. Pharaoh didn't elevate him because he was good looking. Nope. Because he was strong, because he was talented. He said, I'm going to elevate you because there's a spirit inside of you. Bro. There's a spirit in you. That, that the only thing I can say, now this is Pharaoh talking, who they thought was a God. Yes. Yes. He said, there's a spirit in you. And it's like the spirit of God. Yes. Now, everybody in Egypt thinks Pharaoh's God, yep. but Pharaoh's looking at him saying, there's a spirit in you. Mm -hmm. And the only, only way I know to describe mm -hmm. it is it's a spirit of God. It ain't a spirit of Pharaoh. Yeah. It's a spirit of God. Well, Daniel, Daniel was his Hebrew name, but he had been given a name by King Nebuchadnezzar called Belteshazzar, mm -hmm. which was Nebuchadnezzar's favorite God. Because, and this is why I gave him the name. He said, because the spirit of the holy gods is in him. At that time, he didn't even know who God was. He was like, I recognize God in that cat, though. Look at that. And both of these people <clears throat> go from being a slave. Yes. To a ruler. Mm -hmm. Both of them go from, they have a choice. Mm -hmm. Either they can allow their situations to change them. Mm -hmm. Or they can position themselves in God's way mm -hmm. and let their situation be changed. Right. What what they felt like was their greatest job was not to calm the storm outside of them. It was to maintain the calm inside of them. It was main, to maintain what was going on inside of here. Yes. And what they said is, I can't control any other atmosphere other than this one right here. Mm -hmm. And so above all else, guard your heart. Or out of it flows the issues. You know of life. the story of um, the hiding place. Yes, written by Coyton. Yes, yes. Comes to mind. Her dad would turn around, and, and as you read in this story, her dad would turn around, and they would read the Bible every night. Mm -hmm. So here's her dad, her sister, and they sit down and they read the Bible. Now listen to what we how we started this out. What we do does not determine who we are. Mm. Who we are determines what we do. Look at look at what's going on. You got Daniel. You got Joseph. Mm -hmm. Who we are determines yes. what we do. Yes. Who Joseph was determined mm -hmm. that I'm not going to hate my brothers. Mm -hmm. Not because they didn't deserve it. It was because of who he was. Right. Not because of who they were. Yeah. Daniel, same way. Mm -hmm. So here, here it is. And they're faced with, are we going to hide some Hebrews? We're not Hebrew. Mm -hmm. We can cruise right through this war. Mm -hmm. Turn around, get our coupons, eat our food. Mm -hmm. Be fine. Yeah. Or are we going to hide them, knowing that if we get caught, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. we'll be treated like them? Yes. Yes. Who they were determined what they would do. Yes. And at that point in time, they turn around and they said, no, we're going to hide. Mm -hmm. They get caught. They go into POW camps, just like the Hebrews. Yes. Her, her, her sister dies, just like Hebrews. Yep. They suffer, just, just like, like the Hebrews. Hebrews. They sit right there and suffer right along with everybody else. Mm -hmm. And at the end of it, she forgives. Mm. She does. And it was tough. It's tough. It was tough because there was one day that she was standing before one of the people who used to be a guard at the concentration camp. 
and had the inner conflict. Do I hate this person? There was a fight that went on inside of her. And she was very transparent about that fight and what she had to overcome to be able to love that person. Now, let's take this one one further. Mm -hmm. So let's take Mother Teresa. So Mother Teresa grows up in an Eastern European nation and, uh, and, and decides that she loves the Lord so much that she wants to devote her whole life to him. She becomes a nun. Mm-hmm. And therefore, in, in, in Catholicism, she becomes married to God. That's right. And so that is her, that is her whole life. Yeah. She goes to Calcutta, India, the poorest city on the face of the planet, to be a school teacher. Little bitty thing, four foot nothing, just about, goes to this place. The problem is, is that every morning while she's on her way to handle her business, she's having to step over dead people in the street. And it is wearing her out, wearing her out. So one night, she gets down on her face. and She goes before the Lord, whom she's married to in her her faith. And she says to him, Lord. I see all of this devastation and suffering, these people who are dying all by themselves, lonely in the street. Nobody should ever have to do this. Lord, somebody should help them. And the spirit of the Lord speaks back to her and says, why not you? Why not you? And so she and other nuns, this is how how Mother Teresa gets started. She doesn't get started saying, hey, let's heal a bunch of people. This is what she decides. No person should have to die dirty and alone in the street. So she and a group of friends get together, a group of fellow nuns get together. They would go out and they would find the person who appeared to be the closest to death. They would take that person up. They would take them to a place inside of the church. They would would dress and bathe their wounds, clean them up, and hold them as they died. Mm. Hold them as they died. That was her first ministry was... Let me just hold a person who is dying so they know that they're not alone. That was what was in her heart. And then obviously from there, of course, the Lord began to provide, well, well, you know what? If this person just had food, if this person just had medicine, if this person just had this, this person had this. And literally now millions of lives have been transformed because one lady whose heart was so moved with compassion, got on her face before God and said, God, somebody should do something. And God speaks back to her and says, why not you? Mm -hmm. And she says, you know what? Why not me? Why not? It's who you are determines what you do. My God. And when we get this backwards, Mm -hmm. the fruit of the flesh Mm. is motivating us. Yes. Yeah. The selfish mm-hmm. ambition. Yeah. Is motivating us. Yeah. Look at that. Doing good deeds. But it's all but a selfish yeah. ambition. Here's the interesting thing where with Mother Teresa is that no matter how prominent she became, mm-hmm. she still made ministry of holding people. You would mm-hmm. see her in an interview, she would be holding a child or she would continue as people were dying. She would continue to go out and just hold them and love them and tell them. As she was dying, you know what her last words were? I love you, Jesus. Look at I told I told my daughter uh, just uh, just not too long ago. I said uh, I said it's not it's not becoming a Christian. It's being. Yeah, being a mm-hmm. Christian. Not becoming one. Yes. Be. Be. Let what's in mm-hmm. you. Yeah. Be. Let, let, let that just be. I have to say that so often to, the, to people I disciple. I tell them, you are not a human doing. You are a human being. Be. Be. And, and the Lord is less concerned with what you do as he is concerned with what you be. That's it. And so today, as we go before mm-hmm. the Lord in prayer. Mm-hmm. Then what we what we have to, to to pray is that we instead of becoming a thing, mm-hmm. let us be a thing. Let us be. If anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. 
Old things have passed away. Behold, all mm -hmm. things are become new. That's what yes. Paul said to the Corinthian church. Yes. So today, as you pray for us, will you pray mm -hmm. that instead of trying to achieve excellence, mm. let us be. Let us be. <laughs> oh, wonderful Holy yes, Spirit. Lord. We thank you so nah, much. We'll shake it. Father, we pray right now yes, in the Lord. mighty name of Jesus. In the Jesus. name of Jesus. I pray over every person that is hearing yes, this, Lord God. God. Every person that is that is yes, hearing this Lord. devotion. Yes, Lord. I ask Holy Spirit right Lord, now in the Lord, mighty Lord, name Lord, of Jesus. Jesus. I speak over them that yes. they be, yes. that they be the light of yes, Christ, Lord. that they be the life, yes, Lord Jesus. God, that they be healing, that they, yes, that, Lord. that Lord God, they be love, Lord Master, they be forgiveness, yes. oh God, Father God, in every way we speak for yes, them to God. be, yes. Lord God, to be the very, yes. the very body in the name of, of Jesus. Jesus. In the name I of Jesus. I pray in the mighty name of Jesus for these things. Yes. Lord God, as you continue to speak to people, yes. continue to teach them, Lord God. Lord God, may we not strive after excellence, yes. but may we strive after you. Yes. And as we do this, Lord God, yes. you'll give us an excellent spirit. Yes. Lord Master, it ain't about, it, it's not about, Lord God, doing a task. Mm -hmm. It's about doing a yes. task with the right yes, spirit, Lord. oh God. So I pray in the mighty name of Jesus that you help us, yes, Lord God. Lord. We're so limited in time. Yes. We're so limited, Lord God, as yes, to what Lord. we can say. But Holy Spirit, I ask that you begin to show mm -hmm. people and you absolutely yes, take this Lord. devotion beyond anything we could yes, ever, Lord. Lord God, begin to explain yes, or understand. In the mighty name of yes, Jesus, Jesus, we pray. Amen. Yeah, amen. 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 Well, thank you so much for joining us today. We look forward to seeing you tonight mm -hmm. at one of our campuses. Amen. But hey, listen, if you already have a church home, I, I promise you this. We'd love for you to be faithful to your yes, church yes, home. Yes. So get out there. Support your pastor. Support your church. Get busy inside yes. your church and do it with the right spirit. We'll see you back here tomorrow. God bless. Thank you for tuning in to the Abundant Life devotional series. These devotions are available across many platforms, including our Abundant Life Revival Network YouTube channel. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Snapchat at WeAreALRC for this and other great content. If you are in the South Atlanta area or the North Macon and Forsyth areas, we would love for you to come visit one of our campuses. You can find all the information you need at AbundantLifeChurch.com. My name is Jennifer, I am Overflow, and I am Abundant Life Church.